In this video, we're going to go over how to register your mobile app with Meta so that you can run Meta ads for your mobile app. And so let's kind of go over why we want to run ads on Meta more so than other platforms and what the steps look like. So the reason if you have a mobile app, you want to look at the paid ads route to have scalable and consistent acquisition instead of relying on, you know, organic growth or, you know, viral videos is, you know, running Meta ads is the best way to understand, hey, what is my cost per download? And, you know, how is my onboarding converting these into subscriptions and purchases, right? So Meta Ads allows us to track all those metrics and allows our app to be scalable, right? You know, um, run creatives organically, see what does well, take those videos, put it into Meta Ads, put money behind it, make sure it targets the right audience and have very scalable metrics to um, scale your app from. So first thing that we need to do, you know, we have our app on the App Store. Um, you know, it's ready to go, it's published. And the first step is we need to register our app with Meta. So what we need to do is we need to first, two parts, right? We need to register our app with Meta. So we need a Meta for Developers account. And then we need to register our app there. And we also need to create an account to actually run the ads. So we need to create a meta business account. So let me kind of go over what those things look like. So um, there's a couple entities here if you've never ran meta ads before. <clears throat> For meta ads, we have our, um, our business portfolio. So this is where we're going to be doing our media buying. We're running the ads and we're, we have an ad account, which is where we're going to create our campaign. In order for us to track the in-app downloads and purchases, our app needs to be registered with Meta. All right, so for Meta developers, what we need to do is we need to register our app. So essentially, um, what we need to do is you go to create app here for Meta developers, create an account, and then you will need to, you know, put in your app details. So follow these instructions and create your app essentially. And so um, for everyone doing this, your app will be a consumer app. And so you need to create your app um, and register it with Meta for developers. So um, <clears throat> next point of step is we need to make sure that once our app is registered with Meta, that we can track all the events that are occurring when people are downloading apps. So the, the key metrics that we want to think of, that we want to track is um, is people downloading the app uh, from the ads, and are people making in-app purchases. And so these are the really key metrics that we want to track. And in order for us to do so, in order for Meta to be able to register all these metrics, so you can see some of those metrics um, right here. In order for those metrics to be there, um, let's do maximum to see, you know, the downloads and also, you know, be able to see how many mobile app installs and how many purchases and custom events there are, we need to um, create and set up events for the app. But in order to track everything, we need to add a Facebook SDK to your app. So this is something that your development team will need to do. <coughs> and Google this, but essentially, depending on how you guys, what do you guys use to track, um, you know, events in the app, some people use, you know, Revenue Cat or, you know, some other, um, you know, third party track the apps. What you need to do is you need to add a Facebook SDK to the app. Um, this, you know, might take a day or two. And then once it's ready to go, in order to verify that you've set it up correctly, um, you know, we need to look at it in the um, testing tool, right? So once the SDK is configured, we need to test the in-app events. So essentially, what you're doing here, you need to go to the events manager, and we're going to create a new data source, which is our mobile app, essentially. So we're going to create a new app, and then um, you know you have an app ID, connects it to your Meta for Developer, 
you need to make sure that you install the latest version of the SDK, and then you need to sign an ad account, right? So all the entities that we talked about, Meta for developers, added our SDK, the instructions are also here, and then we make sure that we add the app to a specific ad account that we're going to run, right? So from here, we need to add it here as a data set so that we can track all these metrics, right? Activating the app, app installs, purchases, and subscriptions, essentially. <clears throat> so this is where you're going to be verifying that all the other things that you did before was correct. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our meta um, business portfolio and then we're going to add our app. So um, anyone can do this. Basically, if you have a Facebook account, go to business.facebook.com. What you're going to do is you're just going to create a business portfolio and then you will you know, do the name of your app or something like that. Once you have that done, um, you, know, you obviously have your, have your app here your users, accounts, your, your data sources. Most importantly, you're gonna to go to accounts and you're gonna to go to apps. And so your ad account needs to be associated with the app. And once you have the app here, once you have registered the app and everything done, done correctly, you assign the app to the ad account and business portfolio, right? Once that is done, right? So essentially what you need to get is you need to get an app ID, uh, which you can find. And then you add that app ID into here. So you can search your app by name or ID and then, you know, assign it. And make sure you assign yourself or whoever's running the ads to the app so that when you actually run the campaign, all the metrics and in-app events are actually captured. So <clears throat> once all these steps are done, you know, we just need to set up our ad campaign. So key things to note here is once you have done everything correctly, you should be able to track mobile app installs and all the purchases, which is the key things. Because if you send people to just click and go to the app, clicks don't really mean anything. Or you don't know what the conversion rate is on the click. We care about people installing the app and, and making purchases. So what we need to do here, essentially, is we need to create a campaign <coughs> We're going to create a campaign for app promotion. I'm here. You're great right here. You know, you know, you know, Facebook obviously has like their AI system to help you guide you into creating it. But here, I like to do an ad set budget so that we can control um, each ad set and A-B test different things. You need to make sure critically that iOS 14 plus campaign is on. You only want to be running a campaign for people who have updated phones or else your app will show to people who haven't made any updates, which is not a lot of people. Most everyone has an updated phone. So from here, um, testing your campaign, um, you can do, I like to test um, each app for five dollars per day you should be able to see the kind of metrics that i'm looking for is i want to get an app download for under a dollar and from here you can um, set the audience that you want to target for your app so think about your app right my app is a hair loss app so i want to target people who can actually afford the app given that my app is you know ten dollars per week sixty dollars per year the people that would actually only be able to relate to my app is people in the U.S., Canada, Europe, Australia, those places. People who are there where there's actually purchasing power. So actually, those are pretty much the only place I'm running my ads, right? U.K., Europe, America, um, Canada, all those places. And then what I recommend is if you want to reach your audience faster, right, is I would do one interest. So my app is a hair loss app. So I'm going to add one interest. So, so I'm going to further, you know, limit it. It's not really going to limit it, but I want to reach my audience faster. So I'm going to add one interest, which is hair products. 
right? I've A-B tested this before, and <clears throat> when I ran a broad campaign without any interest versus a campaign that targeted an interest, I was able to reach my audience faster and get downloads and reduce my cost per install much faster than if I had no interests at all, right? Obviously, if you want to test interests, go ahead, keep things broad. If you if you have no idea and just want to go ahead, if you really have no idea, go broad. If you you know know specifically, hey, like my app is for you know weight loss, right? Put in fitness and weights or gym interests, right? From here, pretty pretty straightforward. So, you know, put in the creative, um, the app here, just send people to the app. Um, the only reason to add any other links, unless you're, unless you have links to track, you know, specific landing pages in your app. Um, but yeah, just make sure you add your creative here. Um, we like to do UGC videos. Make sure that. Um, you know, send people to the app store when they click on your profile picture, right? All these things. The most important part about setting up a successful campaign is really testing <clears throat> interests, you know, and testing the creative, right? I think with um, each ad set, you can test like four to five, something like that. Each ad set, we can test four to five. So figure out how you're going to reach your target audience the fastest, with you know what kind of interest you know it is you know run each creative for five dollars and see what the cost for download is to kind of give you an idea of what we're seeing with our app and you know what is good what is bad metrics is you know on a campaign level <clears throat> this is what it looks like right so here uh, we actually tested only one creative so in each campaign, we were testing five creatives and see what works. So $64 per install is pretty decent and it resulted in, you know, three purchases. Sorry, I'm recording this while, while I'm sick. I caught a cold while hiking. But anyway, so you see we're looking at those events. This is a <coughs> pretty successful camp, successful creative um, out of all the other ones. So... I put one creative in each ad set because I want to A-B test um, it among everyone else. So in this ad set, I've tested, you know, hair interest, right? So you can see I'm testing hair interest. I can see the campaigns that are doing well. You can see I was doing $5 daily. And you can see that the copy of this ad was very, very simple, right? Um, nothing, you know, it's, your creative is the most important part. The copy you know, scan your hair health with AI. It's important, but most people when they're scrolling through the phones, they're watching the video, right? And the next thing that they do is they, they're gonna click install. No one's gonna read the other things, basically. Um, we're just testing creatives and see what, you know, is getting the lowest cost per install. But not only that, is th these installs need to be converting into purchases, right? So. You know, 63 installs, but no purchases. So the creative just isn't turning into any subscriptions, right? So sometimes you might get a creative that gets you a very low cost per install. But if it's not getting, you know, purchases, it's not going to work, right? You need to find a creative that not only gets you low cost per install, but also um, purchases, right? And so... Um, each campaign, each ad set, you know, within each ad set, test one creative, test each creative for $5 per day, use one interest to get the fastest done. You should be able to scale these creatives and be able to <clears throat> figure out, hey, this is one creative that's working and just put more money behind that creative, right? So uh, if you have any questions regarding set up, setting up your meta ads campaign, drop um you know, drop a question in the comments, do my best to answer it. But hope you guys set up a successful campaign and, you know, are able to find good creatives and scale your app and maybe get acquired.